Hello and welcome to another Mayan Technologies video. Today, we will be reviewing the subcontract process for purchase orders. This process is typically used when we have an outsourcing operation that involves subcontracting a specific step in a job, which we need an external supplier to perform, as our company does not have the capability to handle it. This is usually done when a particular operation requires a specialized skills or equipment that our company does not have. What we would do in these cases is, first, we have our job. I will take an example job here just to show you the process to follow. You may recall that when we have our operations, what we usually do when we want to add a new operation is simply add it. Now, you will notice that we have another option called Add Subcontract Operation. This will allow us to add operations that are not normal, but rather those that require an external supplier to perform. Here, as you can see, instead of going into detail when I add the operation, it will go into Subcontract, because here we need to input a specific information into the system for these operations. We can select which operations we have, and if you remember, when setting up operations, we include certain information. And now, it's important to note, when we set up the operation, there is a checkbox that will indicate that this is a subcontracted operation. Here we can see that this one doesn't have it checked, so we will mark it just to show you the process. Additionally, you will see that when we check this box, we can define if we have a primary supplier for this specific operation meaning a supplier to whom we usually send this type of work. It's not necessary, but it's an option we have. We will save this and proceed to close this. Now we can see that it pulls up the operation we want to have. It's a subcontract operation, and here we can define which supplier we want to perform the job. We can choose from the suppliers we have registered, which is the same process we follow when creating a supplier, and these are the same suppliers that show up when we create a purchase order. So I will choose one at random just for the demonstration. And the next thing we need to do is indicate the quantity we will be sending to that supplier for them to process. In this case, I'll just enter one as an example. We can also see different fields like inspection required, meaning that when we send this material, which is part of our job, and we want it returned, we are requesting an inspection to ensure the supplier performed the operation correctly and met quality standards. And we will save. Additionally, we can also note that if I go to the operation, I will see that once it is added, it will have this subcontract option marked in this area, because it is an operation that I need to send outside. The next process would be to generate, send it to engineered, and send it to released. What we need to do additionally depends on how we manage our internal process, but it would be to generate a purchase order, which is basically the same process we follow when creating a purchase order for materials. We open the screen, and now we'll start creating a new PO. The supplier I need to choose must be the same one I selected in my job to whom I decided I will be sending the information, or rather, the material. So, in this case, we will have the operation open here, and I selected the supplier that we have marked here. Therefore, I will select the same one. Just like with a normal PO, we need to define the buyer, basic PO details, and we can save. Now I will start adding the lines. If we go to a specific line, we can see that in the area where we choose the buy for with its different options, here is one called subcontract operation, among others like inventory, other, and job material. For this specific case, it is important that we mark this option because we are dealing with a subcontract operation. Please take note of what happens when I select this option. When I select it, the system disables the sales order option and enables this button, allowing me to select for which job I am purchasing this subcontract operation. 
Then, we input the information I have already established, which is the assembly and which is the operation. You'll see that in my job, there are eight operations, but here, only three appear. This is because only these three, operations 80, 70, and 50, are marked as subcontract. The rest are normal operations, so the system filters them out, allowing us to select only those needed for subcontracting. And we proceed to save. The system pulls up the part number, description, and all the relevant information. Here I already have the quantity, and here I can define the price. Let's suppose it is $1, just as an example. And we can save. The purchase order process follows the same steps as we are accustomed to. The only significant change we made was selecting the subcontract operation option in the buy for area. We can now proceed with the approval and confirm our order. Once we finish that, we will have our purchase order ready. However, the material we have within our company needs to be sent to that supplier so they can perform the operations that need to be done. So now I will send the material to the supplier. To do this, we don't use the Customer Shipment Entry screen, as there is a specific screen called Subcontractor Shipment Entry. So, I will open it and create a new record. Here, we need to identify the supplier ID to whom we will be sending the material. It's the same supplier we selected earlier. The material is the same, and now we proceed to add a new line. The shipment also needs to be marked, so I will save. The pack ID has now been generated, and now we proceed to add a line. Here, it will again ask me to provide the information of the job for which I need to send this material. So, we do that. We add the information, the job, assembly, and operation, which was number 80. The system pulls up the part number, description, and quantity to be shipped, linking it to the PO we created. With this, we can generate the shipment specific to subcontract operation. To receive it back, the process is the same as for a normal PO when purchasing materials. The only difference, in this case, is that we're receiving back the material we sent for subcontracting. We generate the receipt, enter the packing slip, go to the lines, and add one. We already know the PO information, and we know that we only generated one line with one release. As in other cases, we could define if we want it to be sent to another warehouse. If the part we're working on has a lot, we could add that as well. Then, we just need to mark the receipt that was made. If we go to the Part Transaction History Tracker, which is basically a screen that helps us view the movement history of this part, we can see that the transaction generated is called Manufacturing to Vendor, and this is the process and utility of subcontract operations. Thank you so much for watching today's video. My name is Ana Muñoz. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content.